people say America has never defaulted on its debt. Well, first of all, that's not true. It's not a true statement. But the the easiest, quietest, stealthiest way to default is inflation. It's like, hey, here's your billion dollars back. You know, good luck buying a loaf of bread because I've destroyed the value of the dollar. And so now 3%, um, we'll do it in, um, do the math, we'll do that in about 22 years. At 10%, you, you cut the value of the dollar in half in seven years. Uh, by the way, that is what happened between 1977 and 1981. In that five-year period, uh, the dollar lost over 50% of its purchasing power. According to Jim Rickards, hyperinflation is coming to America, and the raising of interest rates won't be able to help fight inflation. In fact, it will make inflation even worse. Inflation will impact stock market as Jim Rickards think it will bring the economy into recession, and unemployment will go up to 4 or maybe even 5%. But all Jerome Powell can say is, too bad, that's painful and we have to get there, but we're gonna pay higher prices if we don't. And then there's the myth of 2% inflation. The Federal Reserve have something called inflation targeting, where if they fail to have at least 2% inflation per year then it means the economy is going into deflation, or to put it simply, the economy is slowing down and therefore unemployment is gonna go up and the economy will go into recession. In order to prevent that from happening, the Federal Reserve have to target the inflation to at least 2% per year in order to bring price stability to the market and to keep the economic wheel running smooth. At least that's the theory, but to Jim Rickards it doesn't make any sense. The Fed have raised interest rates way too high but the inflation is not going down yet. In fact, inflation goes way up even higher than before. People said between 1913 and 2023, the dollar has lost 95% of its value, but we don't need to wait for another 110 years. Jim Rickards explains that in the 1980s, the dollar loses half of its value in just five years. Will it do that again? Will the economy goes into recession? Let's find out. A lot of people like to bang the table and say, you know, since since the creation of the Fed in 1913, the dollar has lost 95% of its purchasing power. Well, that's a true statement, but you don't need 110 years. We lost 50% in five years between 1977 and 1982. So inflation is insidious, it is a tax, uh, it is a form of theft, but like the kid with the mother's wallet, if you keep the theft you know, in small little bites, but do it long enough, you can get the whole thing and no one will notice. So they say we want 2% because uh, we wanna be able to cut if we have to, but the real reason is we wanna basically erode the value of the debt and erode the purchasing power of the dollar in ways that you don't notice and and they can be very patient that's how they do it but to your point Addison, well hasn't the fed been raising interest rates yes but real rates are still negative so if inflation's nine and the fed's at two the real rate is negative seven that's that's a really really low interest rate and if you say okay inflation's come down to six and the fed's up to you know four uh, about four and a half right now um, so the real rate is now negative one and a half in my example. Um, well, that's a lot less than, than seven, but still a negative real rate. We are not in the world of positive real rates. So then the question is, okay, how, how is the Fed doing at getting inflation to the target? The, the 2% we talked about and explain why that's their number. And this says a lot about what's going on in the stock market right now, because you go all the way back to August 26th. 2022. That was Jay Powell's Jackson Hole speech. And he said, inflation's, at, you know, not, he didn't use the word out of control. But he said, inflation is way too high. We're going to bring it down to our 2% target. Um, we know unemployment's going to go up. We know he will probably have recession. He did not use the R word. He didn't say recession, but he said, you know, growth will suffer. Unemployment will go up. That's just a fancy way of saying there's going to be a recession. And we're not going to stop until we get there. Uh, and so in other words, too bad, you know, unemployment's gonna go up to some number, I don't know what, four or 5%, which is pretty high, it's, it's right now it's uh, 3.4, I believe the lowest since 1969. So unemployment's gonna go up, the economy's gonna go into re recession, but too bad, that's the price we all have to pay to get inflation down under control on the way to 2%. In other words, in the way Jay Powell rationalizes this, he said, yeah, that's painful and we're gonna pay a high price to get there, but we're gonna pay a higher price if we don't. If we don't get to 2%, 
and we let this thing spiral out of control and we even stay at four or five percent for a prolonged period of time that the economic damage from that in terms of lost investment misallocation of capital basically people losing money on their investments uh, is going to be much higher than maybe a short recession here's the interesting part jerome powell scares the market with six speeches he said the same thing again and again we need to get to 2% inflation, which means raising the interest rates even more, and therefore we're gonna have a recession and unemployment is gonna go up. With the Fed being hawkish, the market should go down, instead, the market got rallied because they believe inflation is gonna go down soon. Jim Rickards think the Fed is already reached at something called the terminal rate, a rate which inflation will go down on its own so the Fed won't need to raise the interest rates any further. But the Fed keeps raising it and making the economy crash even further. So how is it gonna end? When will the Fed needs to stop raising interest rates? Let's listen to what Jim Rickards have to say. So he said that the market didn't believe him. The market rallied. I uh, went down a little bit right around that time, but then the market rallied in October. And he comes out at the end of September, gives another speech at an FOMC meeting, comes out November 2nd, gives another speech, comes out November 30th, gives a speech at the Brookings Institution, uh, and then comes out in mid-December, with another speech and then again a couple of weeks ago on uh, february 1st so it's like six speeches in uh about about five months and he said the same thing every time he said we're getting to two percent you know believe believe me when i said we're gonna have a recession unemployment's gonna go up too bad we have a lot of work to do we're not done the market has flipped on and off half the time the market doesn't believe me go yeah you say that but uh, in fact, inflation is coming down faster than you thought. You're probably, uh, I should introduce a concept. Uh, I guess a lot of people have heard of it, but there's this new concept called the terminal rate. The Fed's trying to get to the terminal rate. And so what's the terminal rate? Well, no one actually knows what the number is. I don't know, but neither does Jay Powell. But it's a theory. And the theory is, okay, the, the, the terminal rate is a rate set by the Fed that's high enough to bring inflation down without further rate hikes. We get to a level and that level is high enough that inflation will come down on its own just by waiting without raising the rate again. And the conundrum, I hate to use that word, but it is a conundrum. The conundrum the Fed faces right now is they have been raising rates and inflation has been coming down. Those two things are true. But is inflation coming down because they're raising rates? in which case maybe you want to keep raising them uh, or are you already at the terminal rate it's coming down on its own and now the danger is you're going to go too far and that's the debate with wall street and so wall street is sort of leaning to the view now you're probably already at the terminal rate inflation is coming down you need to back off you need to stop uh, and probably pivot this was the famous word for the last six months the pivot means you're, you're actually going to have to cut rates uh, because you have gone too far and you're going to cause a pretty bad recession. And so the expectation as recently as December was that the Fed would pivot around March or April. They would, Yeah, they would raise in February, maybe March, but pretty quickly after that, they would cut rates. And if the Fed's cutting rates, buy stocks. You know, it's typical Wall Street analysis. It always ends with buy stocks, um, particularly tech stocks. So, with the current high interest rates environment and reckless government spending, what should we do to protect our money from inflation? Should we buy stocks? And what stocks should we buy? The Fed said it will raise the interest rates even further but the market thinks the opposite will happen, so who's right and wrong here? Let's hear what Jim Rickards think. Spoiler alert. This is not investment advice. But the Fed has been saying the opposite. So there's been this battle where Powell goes one, two, three, four, five, six speeches, says the same thing. We're not stopping. And Wall Street says, oh yes you are, so buy stocks. Well, who's right? Well, there's an old saying on Wall Street, don't fight the Fed. I don't think of it as who's right or wrong. You could have an opinion. The way I think of it is, I just want to know what you're going to do. Because if I know what you're going to do, then you can trade accordingly. You can plan for that and you can prepare for it. And what they're going to do is they're going to keep raising rates. Even if they're at the terminal rate already, I think they might be. Uh, even if they are, they don't think so. Their opinion counts for a lot more than mine. And they're going to keep going. But by the time inflation comes down enough to say, yeah, OK, we're at the terminal rate. Nice job. It'll be too late. They will have gone too far because the Fed's always the last to know.